Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is me. This is Earl Raj Purdy, getting ready to, ready, ready to do lesson number 121. You know, lesson number 121 is forgiveness is the key to happiness. Correct perception is the key to happiness. Correct perception is what forgiveness is. The Course of Miracles calls forgiveness true perception. True perception is correct perception. So where it says forgiveness, I'm going to use correct perception. And the Course in Miracles says correct perception is correct interpretation because perception is interpretation. So forgiveness is really just correct interpretation. So here we go. Forgiveness is the key to happiness means correct interpretation is the key to happiness. Correct interpretation is the answer to your search for peace. Correct interpretation is the key to meaning in a world that seems to make no sense. Correct interpretation is the way to safety in apparent dangers that appear to threaten you in every turn and bring uncertainty to all your hopes of ever finding quietness and peace. Correct interpretation, forgiveness. Here are all questions answered. Here the end of all uncertainty is ensured at last. Do you know that the unforgiving mind, the mind that is misperceiving, which is the unforgiving mind, is a mind that's misperceiving? Well, the misperceiving mind is full of fear. The misperceiving mind offers love no room to be itself, no place where it can spread its wings in peace and soar above the turmoil of the world. The unforgiving mind, the misperceiving mind, is sad without the hope of respite and release from pain. The unforgiving mind suffers and abides in misery peering about in fear, not seeing, yet certain of the danger that's lurking everywhere. The unforgiving mind, the mind that is incorrectly perceiving, the mind that is incorrectly interpreting is torn with doubt, confused about itself and all it sees, afraid and angry, weak and blustering, afraid to go ahead, afraid to stay, afraid to wake, afraid to go to sleep, afraid of every sound, yet more afraid of stillness, terrified of darkness, yet more terrified of the approach of the light, which is the truth. What can the unforgiving, misperceiving mind perceive but its damnation? What can the uncorrectly, the, the, the misperceiving mind behold except the proof that all its so-called sins are real? The, the misperceiving mind, the incorrectly interpreting mind, sees no mistakes but only sins. The unforgiving mind, the mind that's not seeing correctly, looks upon the world with sightless eyes and shrieks as it beholds its own projections rising to attack its miserable parody of life. The unforgiving mind, the incorrectly perceiving mind, wants to live, yet it wishes it was dead. It wants forgiveness, yet it sees no hope. It, the unforgiving mind wants escape, yet cannot conceive of any escape because it sees the sinful and the fearful everywhere. The unforgiving mind, the misperceiving mind, is in despair without the prospect of a future which can offer anything but more despair. Yet the unforgiving mind regards its judgment of the world as irreversible and doesn't see that it has condemned itself to its despair and to this despair. The unforgiving mind thinks it cannot change, for what the unforgiving mind sees better bears witness that his judgment is correct. The misperceiving mind doesn't ask because the misperceiving mind thinks it knows every doggone thing. The misperceiving mind doesn't question because the misperceiving mind is always certain that it's right. Do you know that forgiveness, which is correct perception, is acquired? Forgiveness is acquired. Correct interpretation is acquired. Do you know that correct interpretation, which is forgiveness, is not inherent in the mind which cannot sin? As sin is, an, an idea, sin is just an idea you taught yourself. Forgiveness must be learned by you as well, but from a teacher other than yourself, a teacher who represents the other self in you. Through the Holy Spirit, the other teacher in you, the other self in you, you learn how to forgive yourself to think this, you, you learn how to forgive yourself the self you think you made. Let the self you think you made disappear. Because that's how you return your mind as one to him who is your real self and who can never sin. Your real self can never sin. Each unforgiving, incorrectly, each unforgiving, incorrectly perceiving mind, everybody around you who's unforgiving, presents you with the opportunity to teach your own mind how to forgive and correctly perceive itself. Every unforgiving mind around you is awaiting release from hell, which is fear, through you and turns to you imploringly for happiness in heaven here and now. The unforgiving mind, the misperceiving mind, has no hope but that you become its hope. And as you become the hope of the people around you who are full of grievances, do you become your own hope.
The unforgiving man, the misperceiving man, must learn through your forgiveness that it has been saved from hell. And as you teach salvation, as you teach right-mindedness, you will learn right-mindedness. Yet all your teaching and your learning will not be of you, but of the teacher who was given you to show the way to you. Today we practice learning to forgive, which is to correctly proceed. If you are willing, you can learn today to take the key to happiness, and you can use the key to happiness on your own behalf today. We will devote. We will devote 10 minutes in the morning. We're going to devote 10 minutes at night to learning how to give correct perception and receive correct perception, which is forgiveness, too. The unforgiving mind, the misperceiving mind, doesn't believe that giving and receiving are the same. Yet we will try to learn today that giving and receiving are one through practicing forgiveness, through practicing correct perception towards one you think of as an enemy and somebody you consider to be a friend. As you learn to see your so-called friend and enemy both as one, we will extend the lesson to yourself and you will see that their escape included your escape. Begin the longer practice periods by thinking of someone that you don't like, someone who makes you angry, somebody who irritates you, somebody that causes you to feel regret that you should meet them. I want you to think about somebody you actively despise, somebody you try to overlook. It doesn't matter what form your anger takes. You probably have chosen this person already. Well, that person will do. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to see that person in your mind. I want you to look at that person for a while. Try to perceive some truth and light and love in that person somewhere. Try to see a little gleam that you never really noticed in that person. Try to find some little spark of brightness shining through the ugly picture that you hold of that person. I want you to look at this picture of that person that you don't like till you see some light or some truth somewhere within it. Then try to let that light and truth extend until it covers that person and makes that picture beautiful and good. I want you to look at this changed perception for a while. I want you to turn your mind to the person you call a friend. I want you to try to transfer that light that you learned to see around your former enemy to, that, to your friend. I want you to see your friend as more than a friend to you. I want you to see that light, and in that light, that person's innocence is going to show you your Savior, saved and saving and healed and whole. You want to let that person that you see as a friend offer the light you see in him. Let him offer you the light you see in him. Let your enemy and friend, let your so-called enemy and your so-called friend unite in blessing with what you gave. Now you're one with them. You see each other in a true way. You see each other's light. Now have you been forgiven by yourself because you're seeing all parts of yourself correctly. Don't forget, throughout the day, the role forgiveness, which is correct perception, plays in bringing happiness to every unforgiving mind with yours among them. Every hour, every hour, tell yourself, every hour, tell yourself, forgiveness is the key to happiness. I will awaken from the dream that I am mortal, fallible, and full of sin, and know I am the perfect son of God. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Correct interpretation is the key to happiness. You will awaken from the dream. What dream? The dream that you are mortal. The dream that you are fallible. The dream that you are full of sin. I want you to know that you are the perfect son of God. You are the perfect child of God. You are the perfect child of love. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. 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 Correct perception is the key to happiness. Correct interpretation. Correct interpretation is the key to happiness. Correct interpretation is the key to happiness. Correct interpretation. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Yes. Mighty Companion, this is Earl Raj Purdy. Check me out at www.earlpurdy.com and let peace and joy extend from my mind and my heart to yours.